Hey guys, AK here. I'm back in the studio, and I have not been producing all that many uh, tutorial videos in a while. I wanted to do a talky video and let you guys all know I still exist. Um, but I've been working on some really exciting things, some new tracks, uh, and actually I've started programming a Max for Live device that I think is going to really be um, an exciting thing. Um, and uh, I actually I've been working on this this DJ mix uh, for a little bit, and a couple of you have messaged me and told me. Uh, please do more of this DJ mix. No one does DJ mixes. Everyone shows templates. So I wanted to go through uh, a pretty important process of making a DJ mix, which is once you get the whole thing laid out and you can see how uh, how much stuff I got here, um, how do you go through and like sort of spot check? Um, so listening through to the set and correcting any small mistakes is a really important part of making you know, a mix, you know, have a little bit of extra polish and also a bit of uniqueness. And I, I think this is a pretty unique mix, uh, sort of a mashup style thing. So I'll stop talking and just get to it. But we're basically going to listen through uh, this entire mix. And uh, I'll give you visual pointers uh, along with some thoughts along the way. Uh, and I think the most important thing to realize, uh, and this is, I think, a pretty grave departure from what I've seen most uh, DJs and performers do. Um, I am completely off the grid. The, the BPM will never change. It's not relevant. My timeline is off. Um, and I'm just sort of punching stuff in where it sounds right. So it's going to be really important that we look very closely at the audio to make sure the beats are in the right place uh, and then things that so don't sound awkward, especially when you're taking such a departure from you know what the original sound is like. But uh, we're moments in, and I haven't even played any music. So let's just get started, and we'll sort of get the cadence as we go. This is a BSOD tune, less oblique. You can see we got a filter, it's sort of morphing. And we hit him with Britney. So first I hear like rockin', there's a little bit of a stutter. So I might try to use a different warping mode other than beats to make that a little bit smoother. It's nice. Alright, let's listen in context. We're just making little changes to make everything smoother. I actually think it's this pause that's my problem. So what I might do is just move this a little bit closer. Hopefully it doesn't move it off time. I was rocking the bottom. I was rocking. I was rocking the bottom. I was rocking. I was rocking. I was rocking. I was rocking. Now we're just extending the tail of the other one, try to get these to blend. Was rocking. That's pretty good. I was rocking the bottom. Better. Good change. Now look at me, I can fly. I can be a travel baby. And actually, I heard there's a bunk note in there. So that's not lined up perfectly, and it could be better, and it's going to be much more impactful if we actually do. So, uh, great example here. We can zoom in really close, just get the two tracks together, and see where the beats are, and see where the vocals hit, and just sort of make fine adjustments. So... Now look at so the now should be like here. And the at should probably be here. Actually, I kind of liked it where it was between the two. Like right in between these two beats here. And the eye should be a little bit. So I'm get, trying to get the syllables right. And then this gap is a problem for us. So what we can do uh, is we can just sort of trim it here and then warp this, or maybe rather unwarp it. And then warp it again. 
And then what I'm going to do is use the warping to just stretch this out a little bit more. And then I can drag it here. And then again, our modes are real important. What I might even do is fade these together. Close, not yet there. I think the can actually needs to be later than it is. Nope. It's a little bit of guesswork here, because I'm not on the grid, so I really am on my own, just my ears, uh, to get this right. It's good enough for now, I think. I don't like that. Maybe what we do is actually we use a different. Uh, lyric here, because that's not working so good for I was us. The bottom, what if happens if we do something like this? That's kind of cool. And this just needs to be sequenced a little bit better. You can see the transient starts there, and the transient of this guy sort of starts there. Oop, I lost audio because of sound flower. Maybe I'll get rid of the now, so it's just looking fly. That's cool. I think I might go forward with that. So now we're getting into our drop. Good. A little problem there. B? I don't think I heard anything weird. Yeah, it's fine. Cool, that works. Keep cruising here. And it's totally fine to chop up the track, you know, that you're playing. Um, like this. Sometimes just a rest can do a lot of good in giving a mix some dynamic range. Beastie Boys. So that break needs a little bit of work. Uh, it's like something like with style. Fire yeah, alright, cool. Maybe you just repeat this. Move this into the gap. Maybe take a round.
Maybe profile should be over the break. So like take around, I'll make it worth profile. That's stupid. Maybe it'd be cool if we did something else in there. Uh, maybe referencing the Britney. Bass. Be your trouble, baby. You can be my bass. That's cool. Maybe I'll do like... Oops, not spotlight. Where's my paste? Oh, did I not copy it? I thought I copied it on my clipboard. Uh, one of the problems of having a big set is it can be... It can be a little bit of a pain to navigate and easy to get lost. So one thing I should have done is maybe made a visual indicator above an empty mini track or something. But I did not do that. But probably not. That's cool. This is early. That's cool. I'm a fan. We'll just keep letting this cruise. You can hear how that's like a nice little glitch. Just I'll play that again because that's a nice little glitch. It might even be good to use that Britney bass again because it went so well. I don't love the echo. Where's it coming from? Ah, this fade to gray that I got going on. So I might take the fade to gray and just turn it off for this and then maybe use some distortion to my advantage. Boosh. That's cool. I don't like this. It's just gonna leave. It's just not gonna be in the mix. Maybe just bass. Maybe just nothing. Maybe it'd be cool if I uh, had a little effect there. Um, so just on this guy, and I'll turn on maybe my auto filter. Do I have some sort of panoramic chain? Whatever. I don't know what the first device is. I can't remember what I built. Um, but maybe we'll try using a filter here and having some fun with the frequency. So it's just a little too quiet for my taste. Maybe we'll have it morph and I can all I can always like just clip in and raise the volume. So yeah, we're going to have to jack the volume up and this can be dangerous. I mean, the way I have this all routed just for everyone's information is there's an output module uh, or, or rather the track out for all of the major tracks is going to this output rack and this is where 
all the audio is coming through. So when I'm playing live, I can do some, you know, mixing devices and have anything on the master, so to speak, without having it on the master. But also, it allows me to test different mastering chains and, you know, the then I can put a limiter on the master and just be sure I'm not clipping. I don't know, that's just my idea. I don't know if that's a common practice. But anyway, let's jack the volume up of this clip so it's a little bit more. Let's, let's actually do something fun with the filter. This might be crazy. make it a little less intense but I like where this is going all right so and I might even do something crazy and just have a dry version of this also playing that is oops not like that Aaron just like this and that's much quieter let's get the good volume on that it's too quiet. And then lower this one. So it's like the effect is there. I don't have to deal with like some sort of dry wet control on this or racking it up. I can just double it. And I actually want it on that too. A little less drastic. Alright, so this sequencing is good. I'll save my work, because we've been working hard. And I don't think I'm going to get through this entire thing. Yeah, we're already 18 minutes. That's a little wacky. I think... I get what I'm doing, but I think I go a little too crazy, a little too fast. So let's try something that's a little more consistent. That's cool. go into another uh, song here that I think I just use as a transition. So I might do something with this and actually use this fade to gray control here uh, and turn, when this song really kicks in, turn the fade to gray on, have it go up. And, and for those of you who don't know, fade to gray is basically just an EQ um, and a ping pong delay that's like moving um, the uh, feedback and dry wet and it has this really nice just like washy type sound. It's a stock Ableton template. <laughs> just see if you can hear that by itself. And I might even reinforce it with like some distortion and I'm definitely going to have it go all the way I don't want it to really come back in it can like level but it definitely has to get there maybe it'll level slow and build faster cool This is okay, these beats don't line up, but they do right there. You see that? This is the important part. Come on, let me do. 
I want a longer line here. That's freaking cool. Um, we got to fix some timing and um, note uh, tonality issues here. We'll just listen in. So, so there's our first timing issue. And it's tough because we got two things going on right now. Although this is heavily filtered out, but A is. Turn my grid off. Oh, that's nice. So, just some tonality issues. I think this part is okay. I think it's just this part. So let's mess with it. So I'm going to warp it, and then I'm going to just do uh, hard measurements, and then we'll do fine measurements. And I'm going to use complex mode for this. So. So it's like between four and five, so... That's nice, right? Fade the high singer and the low singer. Does this make sense, though, in context? Ooh, this is cool. That's really nice. Uh, how also how trippy is the are these fades? I mean, come on. Um, anyway, um, I think maybe we should do some chorus just for this little bit. And you know, I actually have no problem just like tacitly putting some ridiculous chorus on just for this one hit. Actually, I'm even going to do another, no, I won't do a stereo widener. I'll just do that course. So I'll turn it off and I'll just turn it on for this section here. Maybe this whole thing. Cool. Nice. All right, cool. Some OPO. So that's another example where I'm using that filter, and I might also just uh, bring a clean version in. Much and I'm peaking, so I know that's too loud. Maybe I'll make this a little bit. It's already reduced in volume. That's cool. Cool, let's start from the beginning. 
You guys don't care if I smoke, do you? Yeah. Fade is a little bit lacking. I'm gonna to listen to it more time. And smoke. Sort of. I think maybe just a fade. That's better. Nope, not too much. Cool. We get this little build section. I might actually send this section to a reverb. That could be cool. I'll just do a little reverb swell here. It'd be cooler if the vocals were just a little bit louder in this section. I'm mixing in headphones, so it's not the best. Um, can I increase the volume of multiple clips simultaneously? Looks like I can. Yeah. I lined it up, you can see the transient's right freaking there. Whoop. Almost got lost. Oh, I love this track. Pay attention to this transition. Pretty seamless, pretty obvious. But it allows me to jump around at BPMs, which I really like. This track is so awesome. I'm literally grooving in my chair. Ooh, looks like we got some nice female vocals here. For the matchup. And you can just hear it comes around at a time that makes a change possible. That's well. Yeah. That doesn't. The hit me is cool, but it needs to just be a little bit better, a little bit tighter. Maybe here. Maybe. That's cool. Oop. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. There we go. Better. Can I even go one beat later? I wonder. That's and I actually feel like these tails are hurting me because I can see there's some speaker wobbling at the end of this. It's very, very quiet, obviously, but I think cutting silence in and adding subtle fades to the beginning and ends of these clips, a tip that I see Mr. Bill use all the time, and it's tedious as hell, but totally worth it. You'll see why in a second. Oh, there we go. And probably here too. Although that's silent. To me, so. so much cleaner. 
Maybe not there, though. Because we the room actually works to our advantage in this transition. So I could just draw this right out. And this should be a little bit later. Maybe there, actually. that works better. Just a little better spacing. <laughs> Looks like I already have that idea. Um, so this needs to be sequenced better, this one. A little later. I think maybe hit me there. And then we'll do it together, which will be cool, because we did it separated last time. So uh, I'll just paste this over, delete this. And I'm thinking, like, hit me. <laughs> hit me. Hit me. Although, I probably could line it up better. There we go. I think that's it. And we get to some tipper glitch hop, which is awesome. Oh, man. Just listen to that. Jesus, it's insanely awesome. I think it works because we keep the vocals the same. That doesn't work. Yeah. Good effects. We've done a lot of choppy stuff, so it might be nice to let a song play. This is kind of a... Gotta play a slow song, right? So it looks like this one, there's but nothing I'm interesting going on. I just freaking play the song, which is okay to do, I think. Well, I'm turning now. Listen to this cut, make sure it makes sense, it's then we'll move on. Much. Perfect. Yep, that's perfect. You won't be there. Well, if you want to hear that awesome song, you can listen to Turning, uh, featuring Orlando Napier. Who's it by? I don't even know. Uh, Grizz. Grizz. Ah, uh, Grizz. Of course it's by Grizz. Uh, let's listen to the transition into Pink Cadillac and the uh, Buster Rhymes to follow. I hope you guys are having fun. I have a blast working on this, even though none of it's mine. Yeah, 
Salt Spawner. That's what we call good enough. I'm not gonna get angry about that. I just hope the audience doesn't get evil about it. Or maybe I do. Maybe I do hope that. Alright, don't love it. Like it, but don't love it. Need some more. It's cool. Rasta Rasta? It will always help if you line this stuff up and look really close. It always makes it better. See? Rasta, Rasta. I could do Rasta and Rasta and Rasta. A lot of Rasta. Rasta's cool. This might not be though. This needs to be louder. That's too loud, though. Got you, ball and check. Maybe do this Rasta thing again. Uh, that's better, I think. I think that's cool. Oh, this is silly. These are all good. Meticulously placed, if I do say so myself. What's going on here? Yeah, that's good too. Do to scrap? What is that? I think that's just a pitch bend. Yeah, it's a clip uh, transposition. Yeah. Nice. Ba bam. Go back to some bust up. Looks like this might be work too. Cool. The beat is a little looser here, so it'll work. Alright. Like Tom Cruise, please let me get down and blow a fuse. Acting fools, breaking shit down to molecules. Yo, let me hit you with my ill street blues. Bust the Oh, it's good, but it's not perfect. Blue, bust the blue, bust the Do we need more room noise here? Let me hit you with my ill street blue, bust the Bust the blue, bust the Forty-two 
two five. All right, guys, I gotta stir the stir the stew. Be right back. All right, guys, we are forty something minutes in and only eleven minutes into my mix, so I apologize that the pace that I'm going is painstaking. But I think the lesson here is that uh, for all the production ready music you. Uh, put out, there's just an insane four or five, ten times as much time that goes into every second. Um, at least if it's going to sound good. And this stuff is already finished, anyway. Um, so I might have to do this in installments, but uh, I hope you're getting use out of the series. Actually, let me know in the comments if uh, you're enjoying this type of uh, exercise. And uh, I'll keep doing more, I guess. Anyway, uh, let's skip ahead and go to the next uh, major transition, which is... At Pink Cadillac into a Rhinosaurus remix of some song that I don't know, but I found, and it sounds freaking awesome. Here we go. Come on. Oh, that's why I'm not getting it. Oh, you guys are really going to enjoy this. This is good. I remember this. This is a little Daft Punk revolution. Revolution. It's a little forced. Ourselves some more real estate. I like this. I like want more of it. Oh, it's so small. Later. Same thing here. I was early. It's rough, but it's cool. Oh, it's cool because the next section is super dope. Pretty light or borrowed, whatever. Pretty happy with that. I know I'm just sequencing ultimately, but it's really fun to work with other people's stuff. Still is really hard, I promise. Just some reverse hits and some warp hits. And I just am sequencing this based on where all these hits are. Just teasing out pretty lights. Hey, we might come back to it. This is pretty funny too, because this is, uh, well, you can see Destiny's Child here. <laughs> say my name. Say hello. Let me say. Nice little 
little mixing trick, just layering the hit, gives it nice depth. But, but not doing it every time for added emphasis. All right. This is going to be a tough transition because this is a hella wicked drummer bass band. I wonder if it wouldn't be insanely cooler to be like to like drop into something um, else instead of this ridiculous liquid drum and bass thing. It's awesome. Though. So that's where the one is. Right there. Oops, and so if we just zero this out, just like drop in something totally funky. <laughs> we also we have that, we have the blue house stuff. Um, do I have anything funky tunes DJ library? There's this Mr. Bill track that I really, well, who, who doesn't, like, love Mr. Bill and his genius? Uh, sorry, guys, I'm lost. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it offhand, but I feel like I'll know it when I see it. Man, this guy produces like so much music. Um, you know what? I think it's with Spoon Bill. Spoon Swagger. Yeah, I actually think this is the tune. So, um, what I'll do, totally deviating from my original plan of not doing anything new. But, you know what, uh, okay, so, when you've laid stuff out like this, it helps to have a track that you can just, like, drop stuff onto, like, cut the thing up, and then just work with a little section of the song, and then find the part you want in the, in the tune, and then bring that to the beginning. And I can, like, drag this out without fear of messing with my stuff. There it is. There it is. That's so good. Find the absolute beginning transient. And then just find the right spot for this guy. Probably right on the end here. It's an interesting idea. I'm not sure it's going to work. We're close. We could do something like this. And then just make sure. Um, 
I'm gonna have to zoom in further to get this. Oh, we're so close. Just a little bit more. Ah, I feel like it's a little bit more at this point. I'm not objective anymore. I should probably stop. Well, let's just give it a try. Ah, it could be so cool. Just missing. The timing is not perfect. Well, maybe this will help us. Maybe this will help us. Then just fade this, that could work. Just a little bit more. That works, I think. Just like, and I like, kind of want to bump this. But his stuff is usually mastered pretty hot, so this is dangerous. I'll drop it back down when we get to the main part. It's freaking sick! I love this track. But how are we gonna get back to this? So, to make up this transition, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert silence, maybe like, oh, I don't know, 20 bars of silence. And it probably won't be that much silence, but that just gives me plenty of room to work with so I can, you know, not corrupt the rest of my arrangement here when working off the grid in this way. And like drag a bit more of the tune out. Probably figure out. So I gotta figure out when to drop back into. Which is like a ridiculous thing to do, but whatever. <laughs> that actually could be perfect though. Find that first note. So that is going to be, and this is a nice thing about working in this way, when this actually drops. So I can just delete time and bring those right back together. Well, it needs a little work, but it could work. What if it like really heavily faded in, kind of like what we did with the, at the beginning of the song? <laughs> this is hilarious. But what was that? That's cool though. Maybe 
Maybe just a little lower in the mix. Like minus two. Alright. is happening. So dope too. Yeah, guys, it's been an hour. I want to keep going, but I told myself I wouldn't sit for longer than an hour or try not to. Um, anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll do it again if uh, this is fun and you want to hear the rest of this funky ass mashup mix that well, I can tell you just there's tons more of it. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of this uh, tutorial and if it's uh, helpful I'll do another one. Alright guys, until next time.